draft day and getting that phone call and having the, the, in your case, the Jaguars on the other end of the line and what's that whole experience like the build up, the phone call, what do they say on the phone call? How was all that for you? Um, my, my, uh, mine was a little bit different. Um, so kind of start, uh, kind of toward the, uh, I was, I was projected to go second, third round and, um, and I, I started getting calls at the end of the um, at the end of the first round, and um, Kuiper had me as the thirty second best available player, and everybody else expected me to go second and third third round. And I kept falling and falling and falling. I saw five tight ends get drafted before me, and I actually had a chance to speak with uh, Bill Parcells and um, and a couple other GMs. And it's funny because they took uh that that draft. And and uh, da- Dallas Clark was the first pick draft to uh, the Colts, the first tight end chosen in the first round to the Colts. And I had a right. chance to talk to a couple of GMs, and they told me they said um, they, they said we actually had you rated higher than a lot of guys, but we didn't take you because we, we thought you had character issues. And, really? and that was kind of cr- yeah, that was kind of crazy to me. I had never been in trouble a day in my life. And, but but it's it's kind of the one of those guilt by association things. My roommate was Ontario Smith. He had had some run ins with well yeah, he had some run ins with the law and my sure. other roommate and, and and my other roommate who ended up playing at Sammy Parker who ended up playing in Kansas City for a, a few years, had a DUI too and it was just you know, it's is it even though these were, were, were my best friends and we weren't we were just being college students and I never got in trouble but I was, you know, part of the process because of, you know, things that went on with them. But, uh, wow, that's um, fascinating. Yeah. So when and you got so the call, probably, George, tell us how the, the call went because that, uh, that sounds pretty amazing. And uh, did you think it'd be the Jaguars at all? Uh, no. I, I mean, I, I thought it could be because I actually took a trip. One of one of my trips was down to Jacksonville, and they and I had a private workout with them as well. It was it was very um, it was a relief when it finally when my name finally got called, but I had to go to sleep. Uh, you, you know, at back, back at that point in time, first, second, and third rounds where it was a two day draft. So the first, second, and third round were on the first day. Second yeah. day, I was the like the fourth pick of the second day. And going to sleep that night was very, very difficult. I was very, very upset. But once once my name finally got called, it was a new head coach, so I was very, very excited. And it was it, I was happy to know exactly where I was going. But at the same time, a lot of the guys that I trained with, I was happy to be um, – I was happy for them as well. I mean, you, you, you look at guys like Kyle Bowler, who I trained with, Marcus Trufant, uh, Rasheen Mathis, um, Tyrone Calico, um, yeah, it was just Tao Johnson. Uh, yeah, it was a, it was a lot of, uh, yeah, it was a, a lot of us out there. And Eugene, uh, oh, that, that played for the Patriots. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of us out there. So it was exciting for me, but it was exciting seeing where they were going and you know and seeing all the guys that we trained with. Successful things happen for them too. That's awesome, George. That's a great, uh, uh, you know, brings it brings it to reality. So what happens? So you're in college, you're a college student, you get this call, and then I forget how training camp works, you know, when you were drafted, which wasn't that long ago, but did you then go for a week or two to Jacksonville? And then that was... Yeah, the OTAs. It was pretty immediate, right? Yeah, but the thing is, I came out as an underclassman. I came out as a junior. And when you're a junior, um, well, actually, whether you're a junior or a senior, unless you've graduated... You can't actually start OTAs until your uh, school gets out. Oh. So, wow. and okay. we're on a quarter system, so we didn't get out until the middle of June. So I didn't. So you're 
at that point in time, you were allowed to go for the mandatory mini camp, which was the week after the draft or two weeks after the draft or something like that, but then, which was the beginning of May. And then you didn't, I didn't go back to Jacksonville until the middle of June. Wow. After, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. So, enough. so you can't. So, so you can't actually go to go to where you've been drafted, other other than for like forty eight hours. How you see the guys are doing the press circuit, the first round draft pick, they're doing the press circuit in the in the cities that they got drafted in. Right. Um. Yeah. They're they're only, they're only allowed forty eight hours to to be there, but then they can't go back and start actual workouts. Until school starts, until their school lets out, unless they're seniors and they've uh, graduated already, which is pretty much nobody. <laughs> right. Wow. Oh, great. Okay. All right, George. So, well, you know that that's great to hear. You know the breakdown and stuff like that. Before we let you go, last question: Did the Texans get it right? by taking Jadavion Clowney, and then tonight with the number one pick, who do the Texans take? Do they go for the quarterback, and which one would it be? Um, I definitely think that the Texans took the right guy. They're not taking Jadavion Clowney would have been a huge mistake. I'll right. know, li- listen, it, this kid, because of his work ethic, is going to determine how good he can be. Because when when you look at him, this kid has the physical attributes, and he's and he's shown on film that he can be a game wrecker. So you're either looking at at Vernon Golson from Ohio State to bust. Oh, don't yeah. care about at, that. I'm a Jet fan. We're Jet fans. Oh, that kills me. Listen, <laughs> listen. You're you're either you're either looking at Vernon Golson or you're looking at Bruce Smith. There's really not an or or like a John Abraham or something like uh, that. You're not really going to get too much out of the middle from from him. If he plays hard, works hard, then then you're going to get a great player. But if he just, as long as provided he stays healthy, of course, 